these bloody things <laughs> that we spend so much time time with uh, are becoming kind of uh, kind of meaningless they they melt to the uh, surroundings to our clothes to our buildings uh, to our everyday life It essentially means that now that we spend most of our times like this, we in the future, let's say next 10 years, we're just not going to be looking at our mobile phones much because everything's, everything is become, becoming connected. Uh, the first phase of digitalization that kind of got us here uh, with AOLs and Googles and Facebooks that connected ideas and information, numbers and so forth. Uh, so, you know, abstract things, things of our mind, essentially. Uh, and now what we're seeing is a, is, a, is a very different turn, a very interesting turn, where material things become connected. Uh, real things, if you like. The, the borders, which we are talking about here, between real and virtual, bits and atoms, um, digital and material, the border is, 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 is melting. And that's, that's what we call, uh, that's what we mean with Internet of No Things. always been kind of angry when people talk about technology companies for example and you know I said like, construction companies are technology companies I mean look at this this is a technology that we're in it's a house no one just thinks it as a technology uh, so this is what is happening to the internet and digital services they are kind of melting to the background and that's that's just, that's really interesting someone said what you just said in a very interesting way which is that technology is something that doesn't quite work yet so, so this is, this is the in, in invisibility of it. And that, of course, has a lot bigger impact than uh, this thing that we are really aware of. Uh, and it, it, when things that are digital become kind of even more immersed to our life and we stop being aware of those things such as, um, you know, privacy, borders between different, um, different people, questions of ownership, uh, questions of if we go to the business side, questions of monopoly and, and such like, uh, that become very, very relevant. We still have to start discussing them again. We've kind of forgotten about them. Uh, however, the idea that you can, for example, spray sensors to, uh, to a forest, uh, and then you can pick up a tree that is the, absolutely the best tree there to be harvested. Uh, things like that uh, can start happening, as well as when uh, computing technologies go for, to our skin or under our skin, when they start being the, the kind of like the size that you can uh, safely eat them and, 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 and so forth. That's of course the blurring line between, between uh, nature and technology there happens already. However, if we think about it, we have already done that uh, as human beings. Our impact on, 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 the, on nature, the planet, is, is, is far bigger than actually nature's uh, impact, or impact on us. We are already kind of taken over nature. The dominant business model, model that we see emerging is of course the platform economy model, where you have people who uh, work or supply some kind of surplus, whether it's surplus time, uh, surplus kind of cognitive energy in terms of problem solving, surplus cars, surplus, you know, whatever surplus you happen to have to their peers. Now that's something quite different than, you know, having a company producing something from point A to point B. So the, so the largest and the biggest growing companies right now uh, in the Internet of Nothing space and in, 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 uh, in real terms as well uh, in valuation globally and in terms of users are these that provide a platform in which people can create value to uh, each other. So where they can co-create value. So, so the, the new company model that we see emerging is something that it just produces an environment that is now called a platform where we can come together and create value. Because the truth is, and this always has been, that it's the human interaction that creates value. But company has been kind of just maybe uh, kind of a step towards a more direct value creation between people. 
What we call a collaborative economy isn't really collaborative economy yet, so I'm looking forward for the real collaborative economy to emerge. And I'll, I'll explain why I think it's not collaborative uh, economy. Because we very often don't have a uh, possibility to define the rules according to which we collaborate. They are given to us. Uh, whether, um, whether uh, or, or this, this is one. And another one is it's, it's kind of collaborative economy between companies and people. So we don't have like kind of an, an, an if you like, a Nordic version of collaborative economy where we would be equal on, a, on the same level and, and then we would trust each other. I think when we get this, there's immense amount of uh, value that can be created. So we can, because we can come to the platform of co-creation co and collaboration and value creation mm -hmm. as full human beings. Uh, there's a lot of debate about how this platform should be governed and this is just something that has, has started. I mean, no one really likes the way, for example, some of these companies such as Uber treat their drivers. Mm. So what I really want to ask, and this is of course a good forum, uh, the foundation, to ask it that is, okay, so what is the Nordic model for governing these platforms? Mm. Uh, some people say that they could be cooperatives. That's one thing, uh, and, and that's the start of a debate. I mean, how these people who interact on these new platforms, these things, people that we used to call consumers, what is their right to define the rules uh, according to which they create value? That's the big question for the next five years, I think. Work is the big. Thing, yeah, isn't it? And everywhere people are talking um, about the disappearance uh, of work, which of course should be a great thing. I mean, work is uh, is everyone's work has got these repetitive, laborious uh, things that are just painful and just things you have to do and you have to remember. And then there's of course these creative things where you learn and you put yourself to to uh, to a, a creative, productive use for others and you you create value and, and, and you innovate and all, all these wonderful things. So, of course, ideally what we would like to see is that the repetitive stuff is something that computers and machines will, uh, will do in the future. Uh, and then the more creative things, the problem-solving things are something that human beings could, could, could easily do. Because if you think about it, that theoretically, of course, we can think that we can uh, automatize most of the tasks uh, that exist in the current, uh, for example, productions. But then we can start um, talking about real problems that we have in, in the world that we should solve, you know, starting from uh, climate change, going to um, lifestyle diseases, to things uh, in, uh, that have to do with aging, to immigration, desertification, etc. There's so many things that cannot be actually automatized, but have to be discovered and done. I mean, they have to be innovated and, and, and it's very difficult uh, to see how an artificial intelligence or robot could come up with a solution uh, to climate change. So actually they could come up with a solution to climate change, but how they could kind of mobilize the societies and companies and, and cultures and, and nations and, and groups of people to that uh, is absolutely something that one human being has to do. Uh, to another human being. It's something you have to be able to kind of create trust in. And there isn't that type of trust between humans and, and machines. I mean, we don't consider them as someone, as leaders. Uh, this is a very good, um, good question. I think some kind of uh, a good reminder. I, I, I'm, I'm totally HD Haiti. I'm all over the place all the time. So I, I keep forgetting quite important things. So if there would be like a personal assistant that would nicely <laughs> remind me that now would be a good time to leave uh, for the bus or now would be a good time to send that email, my life would be so easy. <laughs>